lord. I think it does colors too. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of like it. Merry early holidays, everyone. Whether it's Christmas or whatever you celebrate, now is typically the time of year you start getting presents. This is my fifth annual Nintendo Switch holiday buying guide. All you will need when it comes to buying games this year for yourself or your loved ones. Cause I know buying games can be tricky. So my aim in these videos is no matter who you are or who you're buying from, for when you walk into a store after watching this video you will know exactly what to buy and what to stay away from i've gone to a bunch of stores near me i've looked online and i've piled a massive list of all the games you're gonna run across while shopping this holiday season and here's how i break it all down to make it as least confusing as possible starting with the 50 to 60 dollar games then we have the 30 to 40 dollar games then you have your 10 to $20 games. And we'll talk about all of that as we go through the list. Now, from those three categories, I break them down into three more categories. The must-buy games, the maybe games. These games are still really great games, but it's more situational. And then finally, the avoids. It goes without saying, but if I put it in this category, it's probably because the game looks good, but it's bad and don't buy it. And I know it's a lot of information before we even get started, but there's one more thing. Previously, years, I've just thrown whatever at the list. And I've tried to cover every game that I think you might run across, but it's just becoming a little unreasonable. The Switch has been out for half a decade, and there's just so many crappy games. I mean, I was looking online, and I don't know what to say about 30 in 1 game collection, fantasy friends, what's a slide stars? At some point, you just have to use your best guess and your own judgment. Because the Switch has been out so long, at this point, I can focus on the main game and still have hundreds of games in this video. I'm gonna focus on the games that really matter and the ones that you're probably going to be wanting to buy and look at, and then I'll just throw in some avoids for ones that I just don't want you to fall for, even now, five years into the Switch's lifespan. Okay, that's everything. Now we'll hear a word from our sponsor and we'll get started. This video is a buying guide, so in spirit of that, allow me to guide you towards buying the best pair of earbuds you'll ever own. Whether it's an early Christmas present for yourself or something to stuff into someone else's stocking, ugh. Doesn't sound great. <laughs> Raycons give you amazing audio quality wherever you go, as they are the everyday earbuds, and they do mean every day. You can use them for workouts as they don't fall out of your ears and have great bass to get your blood pumping. You can even take calls with them using the crystal clear vivid voice technology and all that with eight hours of continuous playtime that gets boosted even further by this little carrying case they come with that acts as a charge bank. And they still start at half the price of other premium wireless earbuds and are available in five stylish colors. So why not get two pairs so that little Timmy and Jimmy don't have to fight around the Christmas tree. With free shipping and returns, and now that Nintendo has activated their Bluetooth on the Switch, they're perfect for wireless handheld gaming on the go. Click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com forward slash beat-em-ups and use code what, Simon? That's right, holiday to get how much, Simon? That's right, 15% off. You did a great job, buddy. I do want to quickly mention Nintendo's digital and online service. You have to pay a subscription to go online and play some of these games. Thankfully, that subscription is only like $3 a month or $20 for an entire year. And with that service, you're able to download at no extra charge an NES and Super Nintendo app that has a plethora of games in both. And that's it. That's all you have to worry about. But if you want to get a little bit more confusing, Nintendo just introduced an expansion pack to that service, which jumps the price up quite a lot to $50 a year. But with that, you can download an N64 and Sega Genesis app where you have all of these games that you can play. And the 64 games are actually really good. Now that expansion pack, you don't got to worry about, but it's there if you want it. And I want to suggest gift cards. They're really not a bad idea when it comes to buying a gamer a gift card for their console. Because there are a ton of games on the digital eShop you can find on your Switch that you can't get in stores. So yeah, if you're confused, a gift card is always a great idea. With that said, let's finally start this stupid list. <laughs> I'm gonna go through all the must-buys in every category, starting with the $50 to $60 games. So every year I recommend Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, Super Smash, Pokemon Sword and Shield, 
Shield, Animal Crossing, and now you can include the DLC since last year, Luigi's Mansion 3, Mario Kart 8, Splatoon 2, Fire Emblem 3 Houses, and this year, Mario Kart Home Circuit has had a massive price drop down at $60. You get a little toy RC car that you drive around in real life, but it works with the game and augmented reality. To me, that's a perfect Christmas present. So yeah, all of those are as worth it as they will ever be. Nintendo's first party games, meaning the games Nintendo makes themselves, never come down in price, so they always retain their value. As quiet as this year did seem for new game releases, the Switch saw a ton. Metroid Dread is a recent release, probably the best 2D side-scrolling Metroid game you'll ever play. A new Mario Party released recently. It's a remake of a ton of older Mario Party boards and mini games, but with a whole new coat of paint. It's completely playable online with four players, or of course the couch co-op if you want to play with your family. And do not confuse it with Super Mario Party. That game sucked. <laughs> and it's actually, I'm going to skip ahead for this one, in my avoid section of the $50 to $60 games. Do not get them confused. One is much better than the other. New Pokemon Snap released this year. You go through the game taking pictures of Pokemon and trying to get the best, cutest, and nicest picture possible. It's as sweet and innocent as it sounds. Monster Hunter Rise was another really big release. I'm getting really warm. Do you guys mind if I take this off? I'm in Texas, so I'm pretending like it's winter. It's still like 80 outside. Monster Hunter Rise was another big release early this year. It's definitely aimed at an older audience, not because it's mature or anything like that. It's just a little bit more in depth. That said, it's a ton of fun. I mean, you have swords and, and bows and you go and you take down massive monsters with your friends. Sounds cool, right? And don't get it confused with Monster Hunter Generations, which was the last Monster Hunter game released on Switch, which was a remake of a 3DS game, and it's not nearly as good. It's still very good, just don't get it confused because Rise is better. But if you do want to get a Monster Hunter game that is for youngins, Monster Hunter Stories 2, well, this is essentially a Pokemon game is the best way to explain it, but set in the Monster Hunter universe. I really liked the game and it has a cute story. Finally, for new big games this year, Super Mario World 3D plus Bowser's Fury. This is your big Mario release for the year. It is a port from a game that was released on the Wii U several years ago, but it does have a whole edition of an extra game never before released called Bowser's Fury. That's a ton of fun. Okay, so that's all the 50 to 60. Those are the heavy hitters, the best of the best, the cream of the crop on the Switch, and that's a ton of games. So already, you probably are done with your Christmas shopping if you grab one or two of these if whoever you're buying for or yourself don't have it already. But that said, maybe you want to buy a $60 game and then maybe one $30 game and a couple of $10 games and that way you get like four games. Because here's the must buy games in the $30 to $40 category. Immortals Phoenix Rising. This game is so much fun. It's made by Ubisoft so you know that it's decent. <laughs> it's very much a Breath of the Wild clone game but it's still really fun. Starlink I will always recommend. This game you can find it for $30 normally now and it comes packed in with a bunch of toys that work with the game kind of like Skylanders but it's very often on sale for $10, $15 so I didn't even know where to put this on the list but I would say for $30 or under it's a steal. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition is a complete remaster of the Xenoblade game from many years ago on Wii and it's a fantastic game. It's a very long 40 hour RPG so it'll keep anyone entertained for a long time. I will always recommend Stardew Valley for whatever price you can buy it for. Digitally it's $15 but if you want to go into a store and buy it it's still worth it. It's a very cute farming sim game that you'll fall in love with. Then Hades is the complete opposite of that game. It is intense fast paced action. One of my favorite games on the console and you'll never get bored of playing it. Goose Game is the perfect game for anyone of all ages. You just play as a little cute goose stealing rakes and hats and just being a nuisance. Super Monkey Ball is a great game and a safe bet. There's a double pack you can get both Overcooked games in and that is a staple for the console if you're buying a Switch for the first time and you want a game to play with your family, that's it. And then a fun one, Journey to the Savage Planet has a physical now, it's only $30. It's a first person action sci-fi game where you explore a planet and you can play that two players as well. Then the Cheapy Cheeps, the $10 to $20 game. This was actually tough for me this year because right now 
there is a massive sale going on because of Black Friday, but I don't know how long this sale will last. But that said, a lot of these games you can get pre-owned for around $20. And I never know where to put a game when its full price is, let's say, $40, but its pre-owned is like $10. Like, where do I scale that? For example, right now, all these games are $20 today, but not normally. Collection of Mana, any of the LEGO games are always fun. Crash Bandicoot 4, a new Crash game that came out this year is already $20 on sale. The Assassin's Creed games, Bravely Default 2, which is a first party JRPG that came to Switch this year. Burnout Paradise, Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory, any of the Final Fantasy games, any of the Resident Evil games. Man Eater is a fun game where you play as a shark and you eat people. Sukuna Rice and Ruin, Metro Redux, one of the few really great first person shooter games on Switch. Bloodstained, any of the Saints Row games if you're looking to play a game like GDA on the Switch. The World Ends With You, Tales of Vespira. I mean, I could keep going. That said, the ones that will be $20 because they've been that way for a while, Mario and Rabbids is always a hard recommend. It's a fantastic turn-based strategy game and a sequel is on the way. It's perfect for kids, adults, anyone. Darksiders Genesis is a little hidden gem of a game. It took the Darksiders franchise but made it top-down kind of like Diablo and it's a bunch of fun. Risk of Rain 2, I love this game. It's a roguelike game you can play with up to four friends, I believe. It was made by like two kids straight out of university and they crushed it. Everspace is a fun space roguelike. Portal Knights is a great game, kind of like Minecraft. If your kid loves Minecraft, they might like Portal Knights. And yeah, that's it. That's all the must buys. Anything I just mentioned, if you find it around that price, it's a no brainer and you really can't go wrong. You know, to some extent. There are some people that don't like Mario games. I can't really help you there because they're weird. So now we go all the way back up to the top with the 50 to 60s, but we go through the maybes this time. And the maybes are always the largest section in the video. All of these games are great and they wouldn't be in maybe if I didn't think they weren't worth the price, but there's normally always a caveat and I'll give you an example of each one as we go. Let's start with the brand new games that came out this year. We have Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes that just released. If your kid is a huge Pokemon fan, these are a no brainers. If they already have Let's Go Pikachu, Eevee, Sword and Shield, and they're dying for that next hit of Pokemon, then go for Diamond and Pearl. The only reason I'm saying maybe is because I would still say Sword and Shield are the go-to Pokemon games. If you're buying a Switch for the first time right now, get Sword and Shield, not Diamond and Pearl. Sword and Shield is the new, exciting experience. Wario Get It Together. This is a game that Nintendo themselves released this year. It's $50, and I really struggle to see it worth that price tag. I think if I was a parent, and I spent $50, and my kids crushed it in like two or three three hours, I'd be a little annoyed. I've always got to recommend a Pikmin game, but this is a port from the Wii U, so don't buy this for someone if they already had it on Wii U. Shin Megami Tensei 5 just released. It's a really great and quality JRPG, and if you have a JRPG fan in the house, this might be a no-brainer as well, but if it's for a, just a casual gamer, this game is brutally hard. If someone asked for this game, yeah, get it. That's what they want, and it's a fantastic game, but I just wouldn't give it to someone before a lot of these other games, if that makes sense. Mario Golf Super Rush. There's also Mario Tennis Aces. They're fun, and they're filled with a bunch of content, but they are sport games, so... It... No More Heroes 3. I, I can't... I don't... Hmm. If someone asks for this game or they're a huge fan of the series, again, buy it for them. I wouldn't take a risk on this one though. It's also relatively short for its price. Zelda Skyward Sword HD. I'm always careful when it comes to recommending Zelda because at this point we have Skyward Sword HD, which is a remaster of a Wii game. And also we have Link's Awakening, which is a remaster remake of an old Game Boy game. Both of these are really fun games. You can never go wrong with Zelda. But if someone has asked for Zelda, they're most likely asking for Breath of the Wild, which is the brand new exciting one that was made for Switch, and you want to make sure they have that one before you start buying these two. Persona 5 Strikers. If you know what the Koei Tecmo massive brawler games are, like the Hyrule Warrior games, these are essentially massive to defeat 100 to 1,000 enemies at once, but they take different franchises and they skin them a certain way, and this time it was skinned as Persona 5. The reason why this is maybe, despite it being a really great game worth the price, is that this 
this is technically a sequel story-wise to Persona 5. So it's filled with spoilers and kind of very specifically for Persona fans. Dying Light released on Switch recently. It's a zombie game and an incredible port, actually. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. This is a massive JRPG sat in the Dragon Ball Z world and that got ported to Switch. I wouldn't say buy it over Breath of the Wild, which is why it's in maybe. Nino Kuni 2. And if you love Yeez 8, Yeez 9 is fantastic. Okay, so that's all the new games. So let's go through the rest that have been out for a while, but are always worth buying. The Pokemon Let's Go games, I would buy Let's Go over the new Diamond and Pearl remakes, but that's just me. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. It's like Persona 5 Strikers, it's a massive brawl defeat a thousand enemies, but in the Zelda universe. It's a prequel story-wise to Breath of the Wild, so if you have a Breath of the Wild fan in the house, this one could be perfect for them, even though it's a completely different kind of game. Just don't get it confused with the other Hyrule Warriors, which was released on the Wii U and then ported to Switch and it had nothing to do with Breath of the Wild or any kind of story. It was just made for fun and then Nintendo thought it was really cool, I guess, and decided to make an official one. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team, great for kids, but I'll always recommend Sword and Shield first. Paper Mario and Super Mario Maker 2, these are both great, but there's Mario Odyssey. You gotta make sure you're getting that first and if you're looking for other Mario games, all of them are always gonna be a banger. Astral Chain. If you love or you have someone that loves the Bayonetta games, the Devil May Cry games, get the Astral Chain. If you've never heard of those games and they haven't either, this might be a bigger risk. <laughs> Ring Fit is usually $80, but the price has come down to about $55 right now. It comes with a little exercise ring that works with the game and it does actually kick your butt. If you're looking for a workout, this one's pretty legit. Okay, I'm really sweaty. I just realized the heater is on. I filmed with like three studio lights and the heater was on. It's no wonder I'm starting to look like I just went swimming. Dragon Quest Builders 2, I think that is always going to be worth it. In fact, I would even say screw that and put it up back in worth it. Change my mind, put it up there. <laughs> Xenoblade 2, Dragon Quest 11 S. I also think Dragon Quest 11 S should be up there. You know what, I'm moving it. I'm putting that up there as well. I'm changing my mind as I go. It's my list, what do you want? Dragon Quest 11 S is a massive JRPG. And it's one of the best ones. Just put it back up there. <laughs> Octopath Traveler, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, Yoshi's Crafted World. Both of those games are a maybe because Yoshi's Crafted World is really short and then Marvel Ultimate Alliance just, it's just not the best. But if you have someone that loves superheroes, it's pretty good. Donkey Kong Country is always fun, but it's a Wii U port, a game that came out years ago. So is Bayonetta, but I think they're always worth picking up and playing again. And then I always like to point out that even though Diablo 3, Skyrim, Witcher 3, Doom and Doom Eternal are all fantastic, massive experiences on the Switch that a lot of people want. And if you have someone asking for Skyrim, then it's always a safe bet. But I like to point out that these games always stick around $60, even though on other consoles, they're 10, 15, $20 most of the time. They're very expensive on Switch, but you get to play them on the go. So that's the trade-off. Continuing this very long section of the video, we have our $30 to $40 games. Miitopia is a new one. This game was on the 3DS and now it's come to Switch. It's a great game for a younger audience, but it doesn't have a ton of content there if you're looking for something more in depth. Cruisin' Blast! This is a Nintendo racing game. It's kind of just dumb fun that works really well on the console. Tony Hawk 1 and 2 came to Switch. Subnautica Double Pack. You explore the ocean and you build and you craft things. You get two games for the price of one. All the Darksiders games are on Switch now, including Darksiders 3, which is a new one. They're kind of Zelda-inspired a little, but a bit more hack and slash Monster Harvest is one that I put on the list because you'll probably find it on shelves right now. It's like Stardew, but I would recommend buying Stardew first. But Monster Harvest is a good follow-up. World War Z is a great port on the console. I loved this game on Xbox and they did a great job. World Ends With You Neo. If you can find it around this price, I'd say it's a good deal. Game Builder Garage is only $30. Don't buy this unless someone has. But well, I don't know. So it's a game where you make your own games. So I would say if a kid's been talking talking about getting into game development, this is a fantastic place to start. If you like the Telltale games, Road 96 is very much inspired by those. Nick All-Stars Brawl. I've seen that as low as 
20. It's hard to say when a game is worth it or not when the price fluctuates faster than it can release, but if you can find this one for 20, I say it's fun. The Crisis Remastered games are all pretty new on Switch. We don't have many first person shooters on the console, so you gotta grab up what you can. And Moving Out is a really fun game to play co-op. Think Overcooked, but with moving furniture. Cadence of Hyrule, Clubhouse Games 51, Minecraft and Minecraft Dungeons. Only reason why I say maybe is I feel like people who want Minecraft have Minecraft, but if they don't, that one's hours of fun. The Bioshock and Borderlands collections. If you're a fan of these games, they play really well on the console. And then if you can find games like Blue Fire, My Friend Pedro, those indie games around that price point are fun. And then Wonderful 101. I would say get Pikmin 3 before Wonderful 101. They're very similar games and Pikmin 3 is better thought out. And then for the 10 to $20 games, again, you can't really go wrong. Sushi Strikers is a first party Nintendo game. John Wick Hex is a pretty difficult strategy game. Killer Queen Black and Has Been Heroes are a couple of cheap stocking stuffer games. And then Vampire is a fully fleshed out RPG where you play as a vampire and it's a really great game no one talks about and I've seen it as low as $15. Now we can head into the avoids. I've kept this pretty minimal. Again, I think for the most part, we know what to avoid at this point. If you're looking at the box and you don't know what it is, but it looks kind of like cheapy, it's probably bad. There's more bad games than good. And I will say that as much as people like to make fun of GameStop, if you go in and you see something, you can ask the person working there, do you think this is a good game? And they will immediately know if it's shovelware or not, even without having played it. And if you don't know what shovelware is, it's just a game that some company has shoveled onto the console, hoping someone like you would come along and buy it. It's terrible. It took them 10 minutes to make it and you don't want it. The 50 to $60 games you'll find that aren't worth it. The first one is new. GDA Trilogy. I know. I haven't talked about this on my channel, but the GDA remakes that just came out, they're not great. They're remakes of the old GDA games, but they made them in very clearly a hurry to get them on the stores for Christmas and they're filled with issues and bugs. It's not worth spending $60 on them. As I said earlier, avoid Super Mario Party. I... And putting Labo Kits in the Avoid this year. Labo Kits have gone from me recommending them to me saying maybe, and now they're actually even in don't buy them. The reason why I've said don't buy is now there's too many variables. To start with, the Labo Kits don't work with Switch lights, and now with the new OLEDs that just came out, they don't work with those either. The Labo Kits only work with the normal Switch. It's too confusing to explain. It's just not worth it. Kirby Star Allies, if this was $20, I would say buy it all day, every day. But when it comes to recommending a game for Christmas, I can't recommend a $60 game that the kid can finish by Christmas dinner and then be looking for a new game. That's not worth its value at all. Arms and 1-2 Switch, they're just very expensive. They came out five years ago and neither were that great. There's too many good games to be buying those for that price. This was the first year I was going to leave WW2K18 off the list because at some point I'm just beating a dead horse with a game that came out half a decade ago. But for some reason, this game seems to have shot up in price. I don't know what's happening there, but just stay away from it. For $30 to $40, do not buy Balan Wonderful. I haven't even said those words on my channel yet. This game released this year and um, it's instantly become just a laughing stock, a meme. I don't know what word you want to use because it was hyped up to be something really fun, kind of like Mario Odyssey. When you go into a store, I can easily see this fooling someone into buying it because it looks like it could be fun. It's not. It's really, really bad. Just ignore it. Sonic Colors Ultimate isn't worth 30 to 40. It's worth more like 10 to 20. It's not bad if you can find it for that price. It's kind of buggy and not a great remake. Cooking Mama is not good. I know it looks good. Other games in the series were good. This new one for Switch is not. The Outer Worlds, I would say still isn't worth it. Looks horrible and it's buggy. Fortnite, I always put into these lists. So Fortnite is a free game that you can just download for free on the eShop. You don't have to buy it. The reason why they put it in stores is to trick you into buying it because you think it's what you're supposed to buy, but then the case is empty and there's just a code for you to download like some dances. You know these things? 
You can down, that doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. But I use that as an example because there's actually a ton of games you can find at GameStop now that don't have the game in the case. And there's a little bar at the top of the case that usually says game not included. Watch out for that. On that note, don't buy Rocket League. It's a really fun game and you can still buy it in stores for 40 bucks. You used to have to pay for it, but they just made it free now. Little Town Hero, maybe for $15 if you can get it on sale. Games like Bakugan and Daemon X Machina, I would say aren't worth this price and no one's really asking for them and Bakugan's actually really bad. And then Ark is still $40. I hate to keep going on about that game, but it's another one of those games that I feel like kids ask for a lot. Kim said when she was working at GameStop, kids came in all the time asking for Ark. It's just really bad on Switch. And then for the 10 to $20, do not buy these even for a nickel. WWE Battlegrounds, no wrestling games on Switch ended up being very good. Troll and I, Golf with Friends. I put that on the list because it's one of those, I don't think there's a game in the case. You just have to download it. But also with Mario Golf out now, maybe someone would go in, you got that golf game and walk out with Golf with Friends. And I still say stay away from Carnival Games when I make these videos. Carnival Games looks like one of those games that's weirdly official and maybe it came with the Switch. I don't know who made it, but it's bad. And that's everything. I hope it helps you buy some games this year. I would say if you take anything away from these videos, because I know it's a lot, I would really, really only worry about focusing on the games in the 50 to 60 must buy. I would say you'd want to get at least one of those. And if that's all you need, one game, then you're good. And then if you want to dip into the 30 to 40 and the 10, you can look at the must buys for that. And that's all you really have to worry about. The only reason I do the maybes is if they already have everything, those maybes can be a fun gamble. If this list did help you out. It takes a lot of work, so hit the like button, leave a comment down below with what you might be buying yourself or someone for Christmas, and share the video, because you can share it with someone that's buying you games, and you can make sure they buy the right thing. That's what you can do. Timestamp it to the game you want. Wink, wink, I timestamped it for you. This is the only video you watch from me this year. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, whatever. Hope you have a good one. I'm gonna take this sweater off. Bye!